Hi everyone, it's Monique from Butterbee Scraps. Um, I was tagged by Molly D to do my top 20 faves and must-haves for 2011 scrapbooking items. Uh, I'm a bit of a spoiled brat when it comes to my stash, so um, it was very, very difficult for me to narrow it down to 20 items, but I think I've done fairly well. So. Starting with item one, I think any scrapbooker will agree, paper, pattern paper. I am a major hoarder of paper, and in particular, I thought I would share some of my favorites with you. Um, Bow Bunny. I love Bow Bunny papers. Um, they're really nice to work with. Um, Graphic 45. I have hoarded Graphic 45 for a really long time and I finally started cutting it up and using it and it is... oh, I love it. Sorry for the glare there, you guys. Also like the uh, My Mind's Eye Lost and Found collection, 6x6 paper pads, those are awesome to work with. Last but not least, who could live without 7 Gypsies? So see what I can do about that glare, guys. Ugh. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's move the paper and, and uh, the glare should go away. Number two on my list are Lindy's Stamp Gang Sprays and Mists. You know, I've never tried Tattered Angels, but um, I have tried the, the Tim Holtz, the Perfect Pearls. And I'm telling you, this Lindy stuff is awesome. The sprayers work great, and there's so much yummy shimmer in them. And my two favorite colors is, first of all, Mystic Malachite. It's a moon shadow, so it's got a walnut-based ink. And the, um, you can probably see it at the bottom there. The shimmer in it is like a really dark green. It almost uh, looks like the green you'd see in a peacock feather. So that one I love to use on uh, on leaves and stuff, just to add a little bit of variety of color to my leaves when I'm doing projects. The other one is um, Blazing Sun. And this one is a Glitz Spritz, so it's got a pretty clear base and it's got a gold shimmer, so it just gives a nice golden shimmer to any project you're working on. Item number three, Tim Holtz Distress Inks. I would not be able to live without my Distress Inks. I ink everything. And if I, if you're just starting out, my three favorite colors that go with everything, Brush Corduroy, Vintage Photo, and Black Soot. Those are definitely uh, my top three. Uh, but if you're looking for something in the greens, definitely peeled paint is excellent, and the crushed olive is more of an olivey color. I love the broken china, and the reds, the fired brick, and the aged mahogany, rusty hinge. Uh, you name them, I like them. Wild honey is also another great color. Uh, my favorites for the reinkers are the tattered rose and the antique linen, and I use these in uh, these mini misters and I just think that they give a really pretty color um, for coloring you know the white mulberry flowers and stuff. Item number four would have to be Rub and Buff. My by far favorite color is the antique gold um, you may have seen on some of my projects before. Actually, I'll just pull a tag out of another album. I like to go around the edges. I just put some on my finger and go around all the edges, and it gives, particularly on darker papers like the black, just gives it a little bit of a shabby look. Item number five would be embossing powders. I like a lot of texture and dimension to my albums and various types, so embossing powders adds just a little bit of dimension. Um, by far my favorite would be Ranger's Queen's Gold, 
that one I use a lot. Um, I also really like this black sparkle. Gotta have the super fine clear. The super fine clear you can use with all of Tim Holtz distress inks because they don't dry very quickly. You can sprinkle the clear over top, emboss it, and you can emboss in pretty much any color you want by doing that. Also, uh, excuse me, I like um, the Distress Black Soot. That one I use a fair bit as well. And last but not least, this is one of my new favorites. Lindy's Stamp Gang Twilight Bronze. This is so awesome. It's just got a beautiful dark bronze color, but it, there's so much shimmer in it. It's, anyway, yummy. Number six. is I Am Roses. I love I Am Roses and I can tell I'm gonna have more glare here but um, I like the Puffy Daisies. These are are awesome. I really like those. I also like they have a variety of different size and shape roses that I buy. These guys here are the R21s. These are the ZR3s. R8 and R2s. So it's a nice variety of the different size roses. Another recent favorite from I Am Roses are these little buds. This one here is the T20 and this one's a T1. Very cute. And of course they have all sorts of beautiful leaves too. Um, I have four staples although I'm building up my my uh, stash of leaves as well. This is a ZQL4, the daisy leaves. This one's ZL0. This one also shows as a ZL0, but it's a little bit bigger. I've noticed um, lately, sometimes I've ordered something on, and, and the numbering was wrong, so not sure what's going on there. This is a ZQL0. These are tiny, tiny, tiny little pale green leaves. Love those too. Number seven on my list is a mini album would not be complete without metal. So chain, any metal embellishments, you name it, I love it. And I've got tons and tons and tons of Tim Holtz stuff. I love this stuff. Anybody who watches my videos will know that. Number eight on my list would have to be charm making supplies. I guess this kind of ties into the metal as well. Um, gotta have a really really good set of tools. Wire. My favorite is this 20 gauge vintage bronze. Tim Holtz swivel clasps which I always use. Beads in uh, glass, stone, clay, metal, and Swarovski crystals. Those are a must-have. And of course metal findings, bead caps, uh, daisy spacers, and crimp beads are my three top choices. Number nine on my list. Oh, sorry. Charm making supplies, another must-have is the banana tree. I'm sure if you watch my tutorials you'll know I like using that. Okay, so number nine on my list is laces, trims, and fibers. Where, What would an album be without these guys? And I'm sure everyone will agree, you've got to have tons of this stuff. i got flat back pearls, ribbon, all sorts of laces, uh, different fibers. So that's uh, number nine. Number ten would be my Sizzix dies. In particular, number one on my list is Tattered Florals. This die has seen the most use. Um, what I have done recently, uh, because the I Am Roses flowers are quite dimensional, for inside my albums, I like using my homemade fabric flowers. And uh, I'll show you an example here. So I've cut all of these out of um, 
using the Tim Holtz tattered floral dye and a lot of times I cut it out of organza fabric and I uh, melt the edges so it curls up and adds some dimension but without the bulk. So tattered florals definitely most used dye. Second one I use the most is the tag and book plates. Um, I use the tag a lot out of this one and if you're just starting out I'd also recommend the elegant flourishes that one's a good one too. Number 11 I've seen this in a few others must haves and I have to agree we are memory keepers corner chompers. These guys can chomp through chipboard, acrylic, you name it. They are awesome awesome uh, these corner chompers. Number 12 would have to be my rubber stamps. Um, any Tim Holtz stamp, I love them. Um, you can't go wrong with any of his stamps, but some of my favorites, um, I actually have four binders full of his uh, cling mount stamps. This one I bought uh, separately. It's called Flourish One. This one you can use for anything, and I usually just use parts of it, bits and pieces of it on the edges of of different tags and stuff. So you'll see this one I use a lot. This is another one. It's his Baroque. That's another good one. You can twist and turn that one and use that in all sorts of fun ways as well. This Hero Arts um, it's called Graph Background. Great for creating uh, journaling. Spot journaling pieces and stuff like that. And these are some of my new favorite for backgrounds. These are by Impression Obsession. Uh, this one's a newsprint. They have a map, music, notebook, and brick. This is like a crackle one. So those are definitely my latest favorites too. Number 13. sponge daubers. You can get these um, with or without the lids. These guys here have a little lid on them. But the daubers are quite a bit smaller. I personally prefer these. And I bought this storage case. And what I've done is I've got all the Tim Holtz colors on the back here so that I don't mix up my daubers. This case, you guys, you can get from uh, scrapadabadoo.com as well as the sponge daubers. That's where I usually get my daubers from. Number 14, my Ranger non-stick craft sheet. Definitely a must-have. 15, would be my paper distressors and this is a new toy that I haven't used yet but uh, I bought the distress at all so I'm really looking forward to using that soon. Number 16 would definitely have to be my Tim Holtz ruler. Must have. Number 17 my Cricut spatula. You know, I have a Cricut. I have tons of cartridges. I never use it, but I use my Cricut spatula all the time. Um, I quite often make mistakes, so this works well for getting under pieces of paper and peeling them off um, when you've stuck them down in the wrong place or, or have to lift them up to put brads in from the opposite side. I do that a lot, so definitely good uh, good investment. Number 18 would have to be my Fiskars paper trimmer. And this one here is about six inches wide and about twelve and a half inches tall. 19 would be my Martha Stewart scoreboard and this awesome awesome Teflon bold bone folder. Uh, this again I got at scrapadabadoo.com. 
It is uh, quite expensive, but well worth the money. Number 20. I know we're supposed to stop at 20, but I have to admit I have 21. So number 20 are good adhesives. Um, good adhesives are a definite must for any scrapbooker. So I'll share with you some of my favorites. First and foremost, and probably the one I use the most, Xyron. And I have the little one, I have the five and a half inch wide, and I have the big bad boy at nine inches wide. Love them all. Some of my other favorites, definitely uh, score tape or red line tape. And actually, I get these, you can get, there's a place on the internet, it's called the Sticky Stuff Store. You can get these pop dots that are black, and they have the red line adhesive on them. I find it really hard to find pop dots that have a really, really strong adhesive. Glue dots, glue dots actually have a dimensional one that works well as well. Those are must have glossy accents, definitely a staple, not only for gluing metal embellishments and things like that, but you can also do really, really nice uh, dimensional effects with it. I use a lot of the Eileen's Quick Dry Tacky Glue for gluing on I Am Roses and stuff like that. If you guys have ever seen my camera or chuck wagon, uh, pattern I use a lot of this, the uh, Claudine Helmuth uh, Studio Multimedium. This is actually in matte. And a very, very recent um, adhesive that I found that I'm really getting to like, it's called Glues It. And I bought this at my local home hardware. It's an industrial strength glue, it's clear. I just use a Q-tip to apply it and it's great for attaching metal embellishments. It works on a variety of different materials, but I use it for my metal embellishments, and particularly when I'm gluing metal to metal. It's a bit thicker than glossy accents, and it dries more quickly, so it'll hold your piece in place a little bit better. So, Those are some of my favorite adhesives. So, yes, I have 21. 21 is definitely chipboard and grunge board. Again, goes with the whole dimensional effect that um, I like to get out of my album. So that's 21. Thank you so much, Molly, for tagging me. And uh, thanks for watching the video. If you just look down in the uh, description below this video, you can see the five people that I have tagged. So have a great day, everyone.